Hey everyone, so this is take two on my additional thoughts on Dave's deconstruction. It is an absolutely gorgeous evening. I have gotten off work early and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna take all the ex Fundy Diaries friends on a walk with me and just chat some more about Dave's deconstruction. Maybe this time around I'll have even more to say. So I have been taking part in the phenomenon that um, so many of us have been partaking in because it is a phenomenon at this point. Um, I have been watching the Zelf on the Shelf reaction videos and I loved them. I knew I would. I've always loved Zelf on the Shelf but I haven't watched many of their videos recently um, because again, I just haven't been watching deconstruction, ex-fundy, ex-Mormon type videos lately for my own mental health. So it's been a while, but I loved them. And I also ended up finishing the entire video, the original one done on Dave and Bethy's channel, the one where Dave talks about his deconstruction. So I've watched the whole thing and as I was watching it and since then, I've been thinking a lot about hell. And the reason why is because I am wondering how they are going to navigate that specific difference. You know, they talk in their video about their differences. They say that there are many and they don't go into very much detail at all. As I was watching, I kept waiting to see if they would go into more detail. Um, Bethany gives like, kind of like a little list, but a very general list of topics. Like, you know, the Bible, faith, God, like things like that. But they don't go into detail at all. And it's none of our business if, you know, she doesn't want to share, if they don't want to share. But um, I kept thinking and have been thinking about hell specifically because for me, the doctrine of hell was a really, really big issue in, and a really big like catalyst in my deconstruction. And watching all of this content about Dave's deconstruction has brought me back to my deconstruction and that whole time period in my life so much. And I've been thinking a lot specifically about my former best friend because I had a really, really close best friend. We had been best friends for a really long time. Um, I wanna say, we do some quick math, over a decade. And <clears throat> side note, look how confident I am just like walking and talking to the camera. I feel like I've come so far in my content creation <laughs> because I'm practicing not being embarrassed. <laughs> um, anyways, back on track. So we ended up parting ways because of my deconstruction. And it was really, really painful. And I think it was really painful on both sides. Obviously I can only speak from my own experience, but I think it was really painful for my friend as well. And actually last night I revisited some of my journal entries about that whole experience and our last conversations together. And one of our final conversations was about hell. And I specifically asked my friend, what do you believe is going to happen to me when I die, now that I'm an atheist? And my friend's belief of hell at this point had evolved to be less harsh 
than the one that we had grown up with because we were both homeschooled in the same community, had slightly different experiences. Mine was a little more fundy, but, um, you know, instead of an eternal lake of conscious torment or however you say that, an eternal, see, I can't remember like the specific Christian phrases, which is good. I feel like that shows that, you know, I'm really detoxing here. Um, but what is it? The eternal lake of fire, eternal, eternal conscious torment. You know what I mean? Where you're like burning and screaming for relief because you're in hell. Um, so my friend no longer saw it that way, but I think had been influenced by C.S. Lewis and some other theologians that were, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more progressive, you know, than the super fundy um, folks that we were raised on. And so, you know, it was better <laughs> that they were thinking of me, I guess, just being separated from God and that being hell as opposed to burning up <laughs> and begging for relief. Um, because basically like what my friend believed and what some Christians believe is that um, the absence of God's presence is hell because God's presence is like everything good and holy and amazing. And so just being without him is hell. And so, you know, that that is better, but um, it's still a punishment because, you know, in that belief system, this being who creates the world says, believe in me or perish in some form or another whether it's like being separated from my goodness or burning and suffering forever. So it still is a punishment. And for me, I could not be best friends with someone who believed that that was my future, that that was the fate of my eternal soul, just because I didn't believe this certain thing. And, you know, we had a lot of talks and a lot of differences. Um, I came out to this friend as bi, and they didn't believe that, you know, that that was okay. <laughs> like, that, that, you know, that, like, they weren't affirming, you know, they, w they didn't believe that, like, God would bless a, you know, same-sex marriage or whatever, to use very, like, evangelical fundamentalist language. This is obviously not the language I would choose, but I'm just, you know, traveling back to that time and thinking how my friend would put it and everybody else in that world. Um, but, like... I knew where my friend was coming from, you know, like I also was raised to believe that. I, before I started my deconstruction, I was sharing homophobic views, just to put it plainly. And don't worry, there's no one around when I said that <laughs> because wow, what a thing to say in public. Um, but. And, and, you know, just because I'm, like, fully proud and, like, fully embracing my queerness now doesn't mean that I don't have, like, internalized homophobia that I'm going to be unpacking for my whole damn life, honestly. Because I do, and I will. So, anyways, all of that to say... You know, that was something that like, yeah, it was painful. It felt really bad to know that like they didn't embrace that part of me, but it's still 
was something that I was willing to kind of like continue to work with and to continue to talk through with them, but I could not get past the hell thing. I just couldn't because I was like, this is, I'm never getting this belief back and I don't want to because I believe that sending people to hell is evil. Like that's not, even if I had faith, like that's not a God that I want to believe in because that's not love. That's gross <laughs> and mean. And so that's, you know, that's where I was at. And that's why I had to part from that friendship. And we did part with love and we parted with wishes for the other person to be well and to, you know, have only the best in life. Like we wished each other well. I still love my former best friend so much from afar and I believe that they also love me as well. Um, but I just couldn't be like intimately connected with someone who believed that God was going to damn me to hell. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. And so that whole explanation is to say, I've been thinking a lot about Bethany and Dave and how are they going to navigate that specific issue? Because it is very clear from the videos that they really love each other. I find their relationship very beautiful, very inspirational. I am so proud of Bethany, even though I don't know her, but you know what I mean, right? Like I'm, I appreciate the way that she leaves so much room and space for Dave to share his feelings and his thoughts and his experience that are so from her perspective and her, or I shouldn't say her perspective because I don't know her personally, but what I would imagine is her perspective based off of, you know, the fact that she is a, you know, in her own words, like a, a Christian who loves Jesus very much. Um, you know, I'm trying to be like respectful while at the same time, like sharing my perspective, which is, you know, I do still see her as like a fundamentalist Christian to some extent, but who knows, you know, who knows what kind of like, who knows what kind of deconstructing she's doing without wanting to call it that or whatever. Um, as you know, as Sam and Tanner from Self on the Shelf pointed out many times, like, I don't think they put it exactly like this, but we all have to start somewhere. And anytime someone makes a step towards, you know, progress, that's something to celebrate. So as I was saying, I love the way that Bethany was so respectful in listening to Dave share and how she's just so supportive. And when she said, I choose you today, babe. I melted. I was like, good God, holy shit. This is so romantic. <laughs> and I just, you know, I love their love for each other. It's just, it's really gorgeous. Um, so that alone, you know, is awesome. Um, and I am very hopeful that, you know, they can figure out a way to navigate this whole process because it's so complicated. It's so incredibly complicated. And that's something that, you know, Sam and Tanner speak to a lot in their reaction videos about how, like, you don't know what it's like for your brain to go through like this kind of 
processing, uh, deprogramming until you've experienced it. And it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a mind fuck in the truest sense of, no, not the truest sense, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Um, it's very, very taxing and all consuming and it's difficult and it's confusing and it's scary. Um, and I love that, you know, Dave has so much support, it seems, in Bethany. And I love that, you know, Bethany seems to have so much support in Dave. So that's awesome. You know, I'm cheering for them in that way. And I hope that they are able to figure this, this hell thing out because I feel like it's a really big one. It was for me. It was for me. I literally lost a relationship over that. I mean, it wasn't just that, obviously, but like that was kind of the, that was the, you know, the final straw, if you will. And I, I'm wondering and worrying that maybe she is praying for him and she's hoping that he's going to come back to the faith. And I'm worried that he is hoping that she is going to be able to give up, you know, her beliefs, specifically that one. Um, but the other thing I was thinking about though, this is what I realized last night, just because it was too much for me to be intimately connected with someone who believed I was going to hell doesn't mean that that's the same for Dave. And maybe for him, he's able to, I don't know, maybe it just doesn't feel the same way for him. I don't know because I don't know him and I'm not in his, you know, in his mind. So I can only speak from my own experience. And I guess I just wanted to share this from my experience because, you know, consuming all of this content from the Dave's Deconstruction cinematic universe has made me think about um, my own experiences with this so much. And I'm sure that there are other people who can relate. And I think that it can be an aspect of this conversation to consider and to think about because I do think that it is relevant. So yeah, I'm definitely ready to keep watching and keep seeing how this unfolds. Um, I don't think that this experience has brought me back completely into the sort of ex fundy sphere on the internet. I think I'm just sort of like stepping in for a little bit to like discuss Dave's deconstruction and then I'm gonna step back out for a while. Um, <laughs> but man, it's been really powerful. It's really, it's really been strong enough to pull me back in super hardcore. So thank you for watching. Thank you for discussing. Um, I look forward to reading your comments and your thoughts about it, and I'll see you later.